in Jim Collins' book, Good to Great, he talks about companies who were once good and how they made the transition to companies that are now great. And just like any of the our most popular artists and singers and uh, athletes, how it seems to they have gotten their success overnight or their household names now and it's just an overnight thing. But what most people don't realize is that overnight success is actually like 20 years in the making. They don't see all the hard work and the time that goes into building those skills to get to that point of success. And the CrossFit Games have started this past week and I'm sure there's some kind of rookie that performed way beyond expectations and you'll hear the commentators talking about man this guy came out of nowhere and he's doing better than anybody expected but I'm sure it comes as no surprise to that athlete because only he knows all the hours and the months and the years of training that took him to get to that point kind of referencing back to Jim Collins's book he talks about um, a concept called the flywheel and if you think about this huge ginormous disc and this thing weighs like 5,000 pounds and your job and your goal is to try to get this thing rotating so you reach down and you pull and with all your strength and you're straining and you're trying to get this thing to move and it moves just a little bit and if you were to step back you couldn't even tell that it moved but you keep pushing and you keep straining and finally it moves like an inch and then it moves a foot and then finally it makes a full revolution and you're sitting there you're exhausted sweat's dripping down your face and your muscles are fatigued and you're totally worn out and you're like oh my goodness this thing has only made one loop around well this is kind of like starting your exercise routine you're being consistent with it you're being consistent with your nutrition and you get on the scale after at the end of a month and the scale says back to you that you've only lost one pound it can be very discouraging but because you are not the average person you keep pushing on that flywheel you push with all your strength again you're you're tired but you keep on pushing and pushing and finally that flywheel is starting to make one full revolution each time you push and then 10 and then 20 and then 40 and then 80 and finally breakthrough the momentum of that flywheel kicks in and it starts working for you instead of against you I have to tell you this, <clears throat> this is a very critical moment because this is where you can transition <coughs> from being good to great you can be consistent and persistent with those efforts that have gotten you there and continue on with those and continue to be great or you can be satisfied with good and settle into complacency. Do not, do not settle for good when great is available. When we become complacent, that can allow our flywheel to slow down or even come to a complete halt. Now, I'll, I'll share with you guys uh, a little bit of a story of me allowing my flywheel to come to a halt. Um, I, I've been working out and exercising since high school. It's something I, I really enjoy to do. I like to run, bike, swim, uh, do CrossFit, uh, and all those things. And I had been training for some time. And I, several years back, I had gotten to the point where, in my training, if you said, "Let's go do a half marathon," I could do that half marathon today. If you said, "Let's go do a full marathon," I give me a couple weeks and I'd be ready to go. Do a half Ironman, a couple months, we'd be ready to go. Well, I hadn't allowed my flywheel to stop. I had stopped running and biking and swimming, and I was doing CrossFit once, maybe twice a week. And uh, my wife signed up for a half marathon and somehow convinced me to do it as well. And I remember telling a, a friend of mine the, the day before a race about this half marathon that we were going to run, and he looked at me and said, you know she's going to beat you, right? And I literally laughed in his face. And I said, no, there is no way that she's going to beat me. There's no way I'm going to allow that to happen. Well, we got to race day and uh, we got started. Typically, my, my race, um, race strategy is to shoot out the gates, 
push it hard in the beginning, settle into a good pace, and then push hard at the end. Just kind of how I, I like to do it. Um, but knowing that I had not ran anything over like 400 meters in like six months, uh, I didn't think that was a very good strategy. So I just decided to, to build into it, and if I had uh, strength at the end, I would push it then. And we kept going, and we were going for some time, and uh, I had, you know, I'd passed Kim a long time in the beginning, you know. Um, <laughs> we were going for a while, and I, I felt pretty good, and I felt confident that yeah, I was going to be able to finish this thing. I knew my fitness level hadn't decreased by that much, you know. Uh, I knew I was going to be able to finish this thing. Um, time kept going by, and I, I again, building confidence, felt good about myself. Uh, and then I started looking for some water, I was looking for an aid station. Uh, finally, come up one, and I saw that it had the mileage. I couldn't tell what it was, but you know, I knew it had to be at least uh, mile six or seven. And from that point, is on downhill because I was at least halfway, and I, I could make it through that. I got to the water station, and the mileage said mile three. Mile three, all that time. I was thinking I had maybe six miles left, but no, I had 10 miles left. And at that point, my heart dropped a little bit because I knew this wasn't only going to be a physical struggle, it was going to be a mental struggle as well. Well, I kept going and I was struggling and trying and uh, about mile nine, I had hit a wall. I was running out of gas, my muscles were fatigued and I could tell I needed some calories and I was looking for some kind of station with some Gatorade, some water or something. I, it was nowhere to be found. I thought, my goodness, I, this is never going to end. So finally off in the distance, I see one, I come up to it and I grab my Gatorade. I grabbed like two of them because I was so thirsty and I knew my body needed that. Um, but I never stopped. You know, I did a little, little trot in place because uh, I wanted to count it as not ever stopping. So I get my water and I, I just turn behind me and off in the distance, I see my wife coming. All I see is a little blind ponytail wagging back and forth. And my eyes got like that big because she was coming in hot. She was coming in hot and I knew that I better push it. We got to run and I was, I was trying as hard as I could but I was running on fumes, didn't have much left had a huge hill to go up and I remember as I was going up that hill I was just trying I, was like, I know she's coming in I can't let her pass me and then like a rocket she comes running by me I think she even turned around backwards and was running faster than I was uh, she said something to me I, I think she was more checking on me but but all I saw was a big grin and some big teeth smiling and I knew what that meant I'm gonna beat you sucker that's what she was saying I knew it I knew it. And she ended up beating me. She didn't, uh, she never said anything about it because I have a great wife, but we both know that she got me that day. Since then, though, I have, I have got back on and uh, progressed. I've been, got back on pushing my flywheel. I've been consistent with my biking, running, swimming, CrossFit, and got my first half Ironman coming up. Uh, uh, first one in about three years, coming up in a few months. Um, so, I just wanted to share that story with you. I thought it was it was pretty good, uh, pretty funny anyway, and how my flywheel had uh, kind of come to a crashing halt there. So, to be good, it takes a lot of time, energy, and effort. But to make that transition to being great, it takes consistent and persistent effort compounded over time. And then, boom. All of a sudden, people see you as an overnight success. They didn't see all the hard work and all the time that went into it. When we apply that to our um, healthy living and uh, our goal of living a healthy lifestyle, when we start our fitness journey, it is very difficult. It is time consuming. It takes a lot of effort and sometimes takes some sacrifice. But if we want to make that transition to living a healthy lifestyle, we need to change our mindset from a short-term mindset and setting short-term goals to thinking long-term and thinking of this as a, a lifestyle, right? 
you'll start compounding your results. Your results will be on top of results, and you'll continue on. And then people will see your success, and they'll view it as overnight. But you'll know the time and effort that put into it. And those people will come up to you and ask you for help and advice. And at that point, you will have, a, you will have an opportunity to make an impact on someone else and to serve them. I encourage you to do that. I hope today has motivated you and encouraged you to get out and get moving and stay moving. I also hope and pray and encourage that uh, you use those talents and those gifts and abilities that God has blessed you with to serve other people. Thank you guys. Have a great day and God bless. This goes out to